on the server right now. We're getting more of it. Heading into Nuke, the second map of the series is live. Ready to get underway. And Imperial starting on the T side of their map pick here on Nuke. We heard the desk talk about how this might not necessarily be a slam dunk of a pick for them. They think Havan Liberty with their team play and their longer time together could Ooh. be able to have a good chance here. And Al is already getting involved early. The confidence coming out of map number one, finding that first headshot, pushing door, but showtime. That is good from him. Two kills picked up and now the swinging of the T side players working on this A site. They may have lost that player early, but they've drawn it back. And now Doc, he's back in the server. We'll see what he can find in absolutely nothing. Not a welcome to the server for him. He's been shut out of it. Now W1 looking over into the side itself. Three players lock it in for the T side. He might have a chance for a kill. He is up against the USP, but wins the fight eventually. Going back up into heaven. There's no time to win the round. It's all about damage at the end here. W1 decides it's time to try and get away. He's locked Ooh. in, but he lands a nice second shot. That'll allow him to get away safely. So something saved for Havan Liberty, but the pistol round goes against them. Despite the early kill, Imperial able to just use their strength in numbers. Fast push into the A site. Always difficult to deal with on these pistol rounds. And it's Showtime delivering that multi-kill again. And we talked about him having some of those moments over on the overpass. If that can become more of a, a common place here for the T side, they'd love to see that out early. Investment coming through from both teams. Imperial have the AKs in three players' hands and two Galils. For having Liberty here, it's a mixture of MP9s for Mass, Scout, and Deagles. Not a buy, bad buy here for having Liberty. Certainly enough potency to potentially win around. This is the sort of round where if you're having liberty, you would really love to just pick your spot for some well-timed aggression. Maybe catch that one man lurking in lobby and try and see if you can steal away one of those rifles. Remix, wow, Ooh. lands a shot through the smoke, but elsewhere, Imperial seems to be finding frags. And that's all that matters, you know, you can take that damage early, but as long as you're getting those picks and opening up the rounds, you can be pretty happy if you're over on this Imperial side. Two players have made the rotation down to B here for having Liberty. And the thing about Imperial is right now, Alex, they haven't fully committed down to B yet. The only player left up here on the A side is DRG, and he's about to walk into lobby. And the AK was waiting for him, but the decoy just snaps his neck off. W1 still sitting on the site, but there are a lot of Imperial players coming his way. The Rotate just now arriving. Oh, they're not going to clear him. They're not going to clear him. Two kills in the back. And W1 could be about to turn this round. Flash comes in. A bit more damage done. The bomb's been dropped in the open. Imperial have to commit to the B site with low time oh. remaining. And W1 still going strong. Three kills with the MP9. Finally caught out of the round. But Farsin has to get that bomb back quickly. DRG just needs to wait for the plan, put the molly out to the left side. This is smart, but he's got beyond it. He's in front of the fire, and that's the kill. DRG makes the perfect play, pushing at the right time. And that's the round stolen away. Having Liberty force buying into the second round, and they will walk away with the round win. Wow. W1 able to get two players with their backs turned to begin with. They're focusing on ramp. That nets him those two freebies to kick things off. They didn't realize he was on the site itself. Then the flashbang comes in. He finds another 1v1 fight. Imperial start to panic with such low time remaining. And over on Overpass Dinko, we had the feeling that Imperial probably would have thought they could have won more rounds. There were a lot of close rounds in there, a lot of tight rounds where they made a few small mistakes to lose them. If that's set to continue here on Nuke, if they're going to lose rounds like that, they could be in for a tough time on this map because now they're the ones on the back foot. Ali. Down in secret, peering over the top spots ahead on top of Silo. It's like, oh my god, Ali in with the second one as well. Just clean it up against these weaker weapons. Farming these uh Forced by players, getting a bit of confidence going as well. Tries to cross back. He goes the dangerous route as well. Lucky to be alive. 
So he's then bam down to hit HP. Remix holding back garage, but finally Ali's been picked off. Fasting got the timing, got the position, and Remix ending the trade at least. Thought Ali was actually going to be able to take him away there because he just got the perfect timing to cross over. And with Remix taking so much damage, lucky to be alive. Are you down in the lower site? Four players still on the CT side alive. They would love to keep it that way, and he's probably going to get a bomb plant here, no problem. So we'll just have to see the retake, just grouping up, finding his position. It's all about making sure you limit the casualties over on the CT side now. All right, <laughs> that's one way to do it. Very effective. Doc coming onto the server for his first time in this best of three. That six-man roster coming into fruition for Havan Liberty. They've traded out Cake for Doc on this one. And they're going to survive with four players, a couple of AKs saved. Everything looking lovely on the Havan Liberty side here at the start of this game. After winning that four spy, they should be in cruise control for these rounds. And yeah, as you pointed out, Ali just landing these really fast kills. <laughs> I love how he just runs back into the open across the mid. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't even use the smokes, doesn't go garage and safe rotate, just runs right into the open. Nearly dies for it, but luckily he stays live for a few moments longer. Good round for him, though. You go into this one, it's the deco out for Imperial. I've got one set of Kevlar here, Hawker. The rest, though, just on the deagles. Must warm your heart seeing all of these augs back in play. I know you're a man of the scoped weapons, uh, you know, if it's a Krieg or an aug. It's nice to see them. These long range angles, they're always good. Come on, Remix, prove me right. Ooh, he's, he's not really proving me right right now, Dinko. Uh, but the AKs on the site seem to be doing what they need to. Yeah, not really the best fight for there, just spotting, and now he's really trying to run forward. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, let's forget about that one. Let's put that in the memory hall. And Doc walking outside, Showtime has been toppled, and DRG from up in the rafters. Three to one. Having Liberty off to a decent start here on the CT side. Liberty picking up the AK-47s, Z. QK is yet to get on the board. 004 right now. Same for Peria. So we've had a couple of players slow to start here on the T side. Let's see if they can get on the board now heading into their gun round. Finally got these AKs out. There's no AWP in play for the T side, but there is one over here for Remix. Yard smokes at the ready for Imperial, though. Hoping to obscure the vision of that AWP at range. Doc decides to preemptively go down, but they're going to hit this A bomb site. Fasten already finding an early kill, and with one more onto A, this should be a clean A site. Uh, yeah, that's uh, just an easy take of the A site coming in for Imperial. You can even see that, okay, we've cleared the rafters, we've cleared all the positions. You know, when you hear that player drop down vent, that's so much info. They just pounce off of that. That's the tell. That's when they get the info to push into the A site. And yeah, I mean, I have Liberty. I, I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Felt like they needed to drop a player down into the vent early. Didn't work for them. In fact, it's actually what we'll probably loses in the round there because as soon as they get the info, you can see how quick they were to pounce on the A side. They knew that the positions were limited to what the CTs could be playing. You can clear the vent at the end. That good double kill from Peria. Might make the CTs think twice about how they're going to go for those rotations in the future. If they want to be so obvious, Remix getting aggressive and getting an early kill on Yard. Shutting down any players from Imperial on that side of the map. They're looking to see if they can take back some map control and they've got down the vents. Yeah, Perry is already down here. And a 5v4, this is when you do want to kind of worry about that lower site. Ali's down here for the CT side. Breaks the window. Should be info passed on to Perry up. He's going to go back up to secret and play from here instead. Alvin Liberty. Just chilling right now. They've got this advantage. They've got the player down lower and W1 still just jiggling for info on the ramp for that molly ready to deploy. If he has to spot multiple players in that position, just hold them off, delay further. As now we hit under a minute. Ali's actually going to get aggressive into secret and Perry has been waiting for this the entire round. He's got that kill. Now we'll see the reaction on the T side. 
put down a couple of smokes on yard, but they're not going to use them. Staying in lobby. They still have some utility remaining on the Imperial side. CT's keeping a couple of players stacked on A, but they are quite committed. Doc is in a spot where he has to try and see if he can get multiple kills. Oh, this is a good spot though, but Fasten is just taking his teammate away. Now Doc needs to double up, and he's done that. Now it gets in the corner with a flash out around the... Oh, the side of the boxes. Didn't really get the timing there to peek with it. The backside player didn't get a single kill. Now W1 desperately trying to win the round. He's alone coming in from heaven. He's been spotted. The transfer. Oh my god, he wins that. That is huge from W1. Let's drop down safely. Nicely done. <laughs> Took his time on that. You know, Bly will be laughing about this one. We watched an Asian game back in one of the Asian RMR games. Guy makes a sick clutch that just drops down and dies. We, was, uh, we always get a little bit of anxiety when it comes to those moments. He was nice and composed. W1 went to get the orc first. Looked like he knew exactly what he was doing. That spray transfer, well taken. And even though it felt like this was an all or nothing hold on the site, even when W1 is left in a retake scenario, he's able to make it happen. Transferring that spray onto the two players. Continues to be a hard-fought game here early on Nuke as both teams are starting to run dry on money. Showtime not able to get a rifle in this round. ZQK not able to get Kevlar, but they've got the nades they need to run these yard smokes. And no one's really playing with the yard smokes yet, Nick. No one's pushed towards secret. No one's really got down there yet. And they're just chilling out for the meantime. Showtime's just going to be chilling on secret with the smokes fading away. The AWP is still there. The AWP is still at red. So the smokes are used up and they only get one player into secret from it. I don't think they'll be minding about this too much, especially look at the rotation. Just using the smokes has caused. Half a Liberty have dropped a couple of players down here. They're going to be information searching in towards Secret and Showtime's been pulled away. Oh, oh no, God. Doc, this is perfect. Oh, just comes right up. There's no way they were expecting this to come through. And Doc will find himself two free kills. Can he get anything more? There's a third opportunity there. Finally, Showtime getting involved. And oh, that's just horrible for Imperial. They had the player waiting for that, but just at the time he leaves, the flight comes through. Unreal timing on that push. Showtime with the Deagle would have had the ability to get a kill. And the Deagle in those close range fights is really strong. He could have just put out those shots to the body in an unexpected position. Counter-Strike is a game of timings. Just a few seconds can make all the difference. And that round really proving that fact. Down to Deagles now for Imperial. Losing that round, costing them dearly. It could be about to go at 6-2 down here. We haven't seen them pressure ramp too much, and they found an opening kill elsewhere. W1 having to drop down, but he's sticking around. Kills are happening all over the place, though. What's going on? Well, fast in up on the A side as well, catching the one heaven player. W1, he's caught between so many different players there. Finally goes down, and Imperial just across the map explode with kills. They've got a third. All right, let's try and break down this round, Dinko. All right, one dig. Uh, one dig, sort of. Just yeah, kind of. <laughs> you know, hit the head eventually, that. I mean, it's true, he only has one deagle in his hand. Round nine. It's going to be a buy out for the T side, looking flush. They've got everything they can want. They're flexing right now. Over and having Liberty. You know, uh, they haven't really got too much going on right now. You know, Imperial, they've got the Balenciagas. Heaven's got, like, non branded. Choose right now, Alex. It's not going well. Sometimes the non-brand is just as good as the real thing, Dinko. <laughs> Maybe it will be in this round. <laughs> All right. I mean, the Balenciaga shoes were just socks, basically. So I suppose you have something there. Area going down in the site. W1 coming over the top with a deagle. And we got ourselves a 3v3. Donk in lobby with the AK. He was running. Not silent at all. And because of that shout, he was coming. And he's able to take him out of the round. With no real impact. Ali and W1 trying to get this round into a winnable situation. They've both got rifles. Just a lack of kit. One flash. It's not like you're good for anything other than a save call here. So fight to four. T side, it was looking a little worrying for them early on, but they've pulled this right back.
they were constantly on the edge of, of being able to do this, it felt like, throughout those earlier rounds. A lot of close ones in there. Yeah. And that's why they're able to just come straight through and force Havan Liberty down to a weaker bite. I think those CT rotations is really what we'll be keeping an eye on as this game goes on. Imperial might start to figure out that Havan Liberty are quickly rotating players down to B whenever the, the play is pressured. And in that earlier round, in order to leave uh, two players down on B, they, they just made sure that ramp was completely open. So th there's definitely gaps that open up in the Haven Liberty defense once those yard smokes go down. The question is, do Imperial know that? Because they weren't able to play across the map in that round. They weren't able to see just how open the rest of the map was in some of those. Fun fact, taking liberties, Imperial struck first in 18 rounds on overpass, but lost 16-10. So, uh, Bly was talking about that, you know, the fact that the opening jewels were a little scuffed. And I definitely agree with you, Alex, in the premise of you. You're talking about the fact that at the start of this, we really started to see the rounds tick up for having liberty. But as a caster, you sit here and you watch these games, you, you see, okay, Imperial lost around here, a little bit unlucky. Probably could have been able to pick that up, had that chance. And you kind of tell, you know, if they just get comfortable, they get some economy going, if they get the weapons out, they're certainly going to be in a position where they can start to roll forward and get these round wins consistently. And they've been able to do that once, uh, once they've got the weapons. Yard smoke's at the ready. Ooh. This time, the closer smoke's being deployed. I love it. It's going to have no ability to see through those. Oh, no, he is. There is a gap on the edge <laughs> of the smoke, but Showtime's ready for it. I love how they throw three smokes, Alex, and there's still a gap. <laughs> it's just so unfortunate. Yeah, not getting much from it, unfortunately. Would have liked to have seen him pick up something. As long as you're aware of the gap, Dinko. It's, it's the worst when you don't even look at the smoke and you're like, yeah, I'm safe. No, you're not. It's like the Mirage jungle smoke, right? You know, you, you cross over, you expect that to be fully perfect. You always got to be aware of that. Okay. I mean, there's probably a gap here we have to worry about. They're getting overrun at secret. I do get one kill from the rifle, but it's five to five. Tied up here on Nuke. And we'll see the buy finally come in from Half and Liberty. Look at the M4s out, but they don't really have the, the enough money here for the AWP unless they go for a glass cannon, and that's exactly what they've gone for. Remix getting that sniper out, as you pointed out. No Kevlar behind him. Holding a passive angle, but we might see some early A aggression here. Nades being lined up, and players ready to burst onto this A site. Whoop, DRG, Doc taking kills between them. Aloe backing him up as well, and this is much better from having Liberty. This change in pace from Imperial, I can get behind the idea, but having Liberty were ready for it. They were completely ready to shut down this change in pace, and they've caught them off guard. They've shut everybody down, and now ZQK has to try and win this clutch. 1v3 in the lower bomb side. Open hand, misses the shot. That's going to be his death sentence. W1 was confident to just take that fight, not waiting for his teammates to get ready at decon and double door. Just swung out ramp and won the duel. So, having Liberty picking it up. And like I said, Alex, I, I don't mind the change in pace step from Imperial, but props to have a Liberty for being ready for it. Just having a couple of players in position. That man at the old vent is in a, a really good spot to spot the early aggression that comes out through door because you can kind of dodge those flashbangs fairly effectively. Sometimes teams will like to molly that when they go for the fast play, so they lose that first fight. And then the other players were focusing in on the other positions. So after an attempted switch up, Imperial looked to go back to their standard yard smokes, which have been fairly effective for them early in this game. Rarely getting kills off the back of the yard smokes, but getting some control, forcing some sort of response from the CTs. Oftentimes, having Liberty would rotate a player down vents quite quickly. But in this round, we haven't seen that similar response. Remix is just so low holding this B side of the map. Wait to see if having Liberty are happy leaving him here because he's about to be pressured and he picks the first man out of the air. Yeah, he's ready for the second play, but he's going to transition his position down into the site, but he pulls the nades at the wrong time. I thought he was going to have a chance at the double door, but W1 steps up in his place. Two kills. 
And the fights continue outside. It leaves dead QK left alone into the 1v3 clutch. It just swinging up from the vent. He's going to go stick the ball. No, an alley. Oh, no. Comes around the corner. Denies that from happening and wins the round for having Liberty. What an explosive game we have in these mid rounds and late rounds. You know, it's just down in that lower site. Everything just happening. And the quick up the vent, getting the one kill, but not really ever in a position to win that round, unfortunately. W1 has definitely been spraying to the body a lot, but it's been really effective for him. Just consistently controlling that spray really well. Never really snappy shots from him, but just in a position where he's able to get off the full spray. This time Showtime underhanding a smoke to be able to get into Garage. Alla hearing some shots around him. Remix has been taken down low early on. Showtime still sitting in Garage, but Alla's just found a kill. At least they know he's here now, but Remix is covering this angle from the backside. Hurry up with the headshot elsewhere on Doc. Remix trying to get the shot out of Garage, but not landing it. His teammate is close up and personal. Alla, oh, he's about to swing into an AWP here, though. He don't want to be doing that. Good flash. He was waiting for it the whole time. I thought he was about to dry peek. Luckily, waited on the flash from his teammate. Guess what? Twitted out by Showtime. At least it is the one for one. 3v3, Imperial. That bomb is still outside, just below silo. So they can't really effectively play contact into the A site here and hope to win the round. So they still have to go back and get that bomb. And luckily, Peria is there. He's picked it up. He's going to be walking outside. Could get a full A wrap here, you know, one from in. But Remix is waiting for this health wrap, and he's got this perfect position. Oh, Showtime, he has no idea. Good night, Showtime. Good repositioning. 27. Oh, no, Ooh, DRG almost flicks back, but he goes down. One HP on Peria, but that bomb will be able to go down on the site. And bomb planted. Remix coming in from heaven. This is definitely always a difficult shot for an AWPer to hit. When you're coming in heaven, you have to look down into the site. Can't even land the shot quickly, and it's not going to work out for him. Chow comes in. It's all on W1. Flash into the bomb site. One versus one up against the hot player, and the headshot is through. Shao goes down, and having Liberty win yet another round. They've already won the half, yet to seven by a minimum. Imperial will desperately looking for a couple more rounds to sprinkle out the end of this first half. You know, it's a close one, but they get it over the line. This time it's W1 having an incredible performance for Haban Liberty. Pointed out previously that. I don't necessarily expect Ala to just be the, the standout player in every game. I expect that to change round in some of these matchups. This time, W1, 15 for four. Having a fantastic showing for himself. And late into the half, Imperial having to go down to a half by. Five rounds on the ball for them so far. They would have to put in a shift in this round with the Deeks and the Scout to try and get a six. Remix tasked with holding the org outside. And, uh, he started the position just the generator, now changing up his position. W1 on the ramp. Smoke up to cover off his vision. He wants to go over the top. Good change of position, good headshot. Second kill might be coming through. Unfortunately for him, though, it is only the one kill. And now Remix is under pressure. He's dealt out one kill, but there's still plenty more players running him down at showtime with P250. Just bombards his position and with the headshot has drawn it back into a 3v3. CT's looking to stick together as they search for information on Yard, not feeling comfortable holding back. That bomb of showtime has just slipped past them, though. Imperial will begin to group up. They'll get together on towards ramp. And if they go down to the lower side quickly enough, they could... Oh no, they're gonna get caught. The bomb goes down. Oh no, Doc in the perfect timing. They just took too long. And unfortunately, that'll catch them in the wrong position. And Doc comes in, luckily just spotting them one by one there. And I actually wasn't against how they played that. I think, like you said, grouping up is the right idea. I think it's some of these mid rounds where they're at an equal odds of a 3v3. Imperial have sometimes gone and split up and, and given 1v1s away to the CT side. This time, they actually group up with the strength and numbers on ramp. And they just get picked apart to the timing there, I feel. You know, if it's a second earlier, they, they likely have a much better chance at winning that round. 
At least they have a full gum round into the last round of the half, but they've already lost the first player. Here he is in, falling early. Remix going straight back to spawn. He does oh, this, why not? He's done this twice. I love it. Such a good spot. Actually underutilized sometimes. Will Showtime continue to try and wrap heaven though? You know, he might actually just die to remix. If he gets if he pushes into hell and up heaven here, he probably gets distracted by the player that's there already. And then remix has a really good chance of just taking that shot. He's not have a player lower. That's the hell player swinging out. And now showtime. He's not gonna continue to flank instead, just goes down B. Not too many rounds where we've seen this straight up secret to B play. This is one of the times where Hav and Liberty haven't responded. They haven't sent a player down to cover off this B side of the map. So the smoke at the ready, not even necessary. They're going to get this bomb down on the B side. And even though Hav and Liberty have some nades remaining, only the one kit, they've got to be quick to get back to that B side of the map. Oh, Chow gets caught. Doc just jumping down and now one player holding the vent. Doc is going to get his head torn off. A second player there as well for the T side. Just cleaning up those vent players. Now DRG and Remix trying to get back into this for the CT side. It is a 2v3. Still winnable, especially with DRG being that good on the rifle. Remix 1v1, AWP versus AWP. No kit, so he runs forward and tries to pick up the AK. But ZQK is waiting for it on the lowest side. It's time for a short break, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll be right back to continue this bloodbath of a game heading into the second.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get into the second half. My name is Jinko, joined by Hawker for this one. And it's the South American matchup. Brazilians taking on Brazilians here. Imperial versus Having Liberty. I mean, looking at this Having Liberty side, we, we really see a step up on individual performance across the board. Uh, W1's come in and actually looking pretty good. Get a lot of multi-kill rounds out of him. DRG had some big moments as well. Imperial... 9 to 6. They're down a little bit here, but this, with a pistol around, they can find themselves right back in things. That's definitely what they'll be thinking to themselves right now over on the Imperial side. Havan Liberty lost against an A rush on their CT pistol. Might see them using that. Oh, what? How is Fast in here? He's just got a free kill from behind and the utility isn't even allowed to be deployed. They're going to have to funnel into this A bomb site and the CTs are stacked in possession. Mm, Showtime getting the kills. Ala and W1 trying to do something here. Ali trying to get through ramp. He's done damage onto that hell player who's actually just forced to run back into spawn. And they at least have that ramp drop. But there's already a rotation from some CTs. They're down here in defense. So trying to get anything... Out of this pistol round is going to be very difficult for Happen Liberty. W1 hears the window breaking open as well. Knows he has to deal with a player deep in the site. And now realizing with the time that's passed, there could be a player coming through the ramp room as well. So W1 just getting pushed from every angle. Unfortunately, doesn't get anything. So 7-9, good pistol round from Imperial. Nice that they were so ready on the A site, even though there were a couple of flashes that came in. Showtime's position is a nice one where you can quickly either dodge away from the flashes or they're just not going to blind you too much, depending on where the flash is deployed. And you can just continue to focus those players who are rushing out through the hut. It allows them to get out into the open as well, so your teammates can help you on those fights if necessary. But here comes the fast A play from Havan Liberty. Trying to run out with the weaker weapons, trying to get the Deagles and the Tech Nines involved in a lot of these early fights. It's worked out for Remix on the Deagle. They forced the defense back, and now they're going to have to go for the retake. Not that much utility left to do it either. Smoke's coming in from Havan Liberty to lock them out. Imperial look like they're done with this. They realize they, they don't have much of a chance. They needed more resistance on the A site to begin with. And only having the one player there properly committed to fighting the site ends up being incredibly costly. Yeah, one one kill is not enough on that A-hole there. So with the amount of investment, it's not worth throwing this all away. Good stuff from having Liberty. That's the, the perfect scenario, right? You just call for this straight rush into the A-side, Tech-9 armor, get into the A-bomb site. They find the one kill and due to the setup inside of the site, it's enough to win the round. Have and Liberty. You know, they lose the pistol round. Started to worry a little bit, maybe, you know, letting this, uh, maybe our lead will slowly come back and we'll be tied up again. And the hard work will have to begin once more, but no, they have come back swinging in with the Tech Nines. Get the round on the board. Although the save call has put Imperial into position where they still can, of course, compete in this one. And we've got the M4s, the scout and play for mass, good utility still. I think this is a, a series that if... Imperial end up losing this 2-0. They'll look back on as one that they really could have turned around. There are a lot of rounds here they'll probably feel they let slip throughout this game. It's definitely felt like a, a closer series than a 2-0, but if Imperial can't win the rounds, if Hab and Liberty keep on coming at them with rounds like that, then they deserve the 2-0, which is looking at more and more likely right now. It's by for Imperial. Pretty important one. If they lose this, they're going to go fairly far behind. In come the yard smokes. Xiao sitting on the other side of them. And there is a player down secret ready to spot for info if Havan Liberty are allowed to cross safely. It looks like they will be able to get down safely with the smokes. A garage player playing tucked in the corner. So we'll fall on the defensive player already in secret to really try and deal with that. And now they move forward down and into the site. Harrier playing from Decon has showtime in the vent as well. They've got a decent setup here on the defense to try and deal with this. So he up, good flash. Showtime tries to get something. He gets one kill. <laughs> Not the best nit thrown in that by Parrier. That's going to drop himself a little bit down on the HP. The patient play from the back of Garage results in W1's death. 
And the bomb trying to figure out where it wants to go here, but it might not even get anyone near a site. Finally, clear it up. Remix has taken one on the A site. Fasten coming in with a good double. And Imperial, they swing right back into this one, proving that the save call was the right call to make. Good work from Imperial there. Having two players down secret, showing some strong resistance. Showtime flashed in to begin with, and that means that Xiao can sit on that garage position. He doesn't have to move. He doesn't have to rotate. He catches a player in the back, and Havan Liberty weren't aware that so many players would still be stuck in their positions. So now Havan Liberty have to see if they can win another one of these buys with weaker weapons. They were able to win the previous one on a fast A play, this time, though, not going for anything quite as quick. Fasten up in the rafters. Multiple T's. And towards hut. Fasten's dropped down. Gonna really have to pop off in this position now as well. He gets two. Can he get a third kill? The answer is a resounding no. Ali's done a good job of cleaning up the defense in the A site. Now they've got to play for the retake. Two kits. Utility. Just a smoke and a flash, unfortunately, for them. The Molly up into heaven. That's gonna buy some extra time here. In fact, it's gonna buy so much time. It's forced the CTs back away from heaven. And this secret player, they're watching it. They're aware of this possibility. They're gonna hard check it as well. I really feel like Doc is going to go down unless they just forget about it as they cross over. And that's exactly what they've done. Just the perfect angle taken here from Doc. And that's a headshot from the Deagle. Time is so low. I don't think they can do this. They're on the ball, but Al is in position. And that's the round win. The one kill with the Galil followed through onto the second. Have a liberty. Come through with another weaker by win. Ali even goes up with the ship there because he doesn't care. They've won the round. They've put the CTs back in a poorer position. And they just keep getting away with rounds like that, Dinko. It's going to be so frustrating for Imperial right now. Yeah, it's got to be really frustrating for them. You know, when, when we've seen just across the board, uh, we, we, we see just them checking that secret position. They're hard checking it. We think they're going to really be able to take that player down and they're on for a, a great chance. But just the angle taken, they couldn't spot the player and he just hits the headshot. And then with the time limited, Ala just does a good job here at cleaning up. I don't know how I would have felt if they just left a player to lick, push heaven. I feel like you could have rotated two players around hot there and left one just waiting up in heaven. You go back into the sites, you have a multi-prong approach back into the retake. That could have been something they could have decided there in that round. And it is the T side who continue to win rounds. 11 to 8. Blair predicted Havan to go on to win this 2-0. Good position for him to do so right now. Definitely looking likely. Another CT4 spy, which... It's going to have to go their way to keep them close in this game. Piria's in dropping down to the B side of the map. That is two CTs now positioned. Yeah. They do make a lot of these early B rotations over on Imperial. I like to get those players down in the lower side early. It's going to be the A play again. Out again, Showtime from this spot. He's got one kill. Damage done on the second, finally, picking it up with the USP. One's come in from Chow on the Deagle, and now it's all on DRG and Remix left alone, trying to get back into the site. And DRG is the last remaining player, and the pistol brings him down. That's the cut around Imperial have been looking for. Showtime effectively putting up a wall and just locking those players into the hut there. Smoke goes down, he's able to just spray in. Get the first kill, USP out. They can never get him through the smoke and they can never push through the smoke themselves because they know there's a player sitting on the other side of it just waiting with open arms to embrace them. And that means that one side of the push has been cut off. So as having Liberty filter out through door, it's much more difficult for those players. There aren't many angles cleared out by the players pushing from hut. There's a lot of different positions you have to try and deal with. And we get a pause. 11-9 lead for having Liberty, but honestly, with how this second half has played out, Dinko, I, I don't really know if I can be confident in anything right now. It, it seems like whoever has the weaker buy is winning.
yeah, it's, uh, it, it's definitely weird to watch Counter-Strike like this where, you know, you, you can look at everything objectively and say, okay, we, we should be seeing this round play out this way and it just doesn't go as planned. You just got to throw all logic out the window. Danger Man, Showtime have back-to-back -back 110 plus ADR maps the last time these two met. It was a one-sided affair for Imperial, if you guys remember back to the 2-0 win over Haven Liberty. This has been a different showing out of the Haven Liberty team. They've leveled up their game across the board, and they've actually had some very strong individuals coming out in force today across these first two maps. As we were pointing out previously, Showtime is, is almost always going to be near the top of the board for Imperial. But that's mm. not going to matter if some of these Havan Liberty players are going to take it in turns to have outstanding games of their own. It's not going to matter if some of the Imperial players have, uh, have poor performances by their standards. And as ZQK was playing pretty well over on Overpass, I think when he was getting involved, he was doing well with the AWP. We haven't seen that same sort of impact here on Nuke. Just noticing that they've left a packet of crisps on the chair there, Hux. Uh, it's not exactly the best place to leave them. Look like cheese and onion. I do miss flavors of crisps. So I live in I live in uh, mainland Europe now. I live in Poland. And the, the main issue I have about living here is just the fact that crisps or potato chips for anybody else that uses the wrong terminology, it, it just there's not very many flavors, you know? It's just, it just paprika everything. I don't, I don't want to eat paprika, Alex, every day. Paprika's not awful. It's, it's pretty decent. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's good. But if it's the only good flavor, then it gets pretty, uh, pretty old fast. Yeah, I remember going to Ukraine. I was surprised that there was there was no salt and vinegar crisps anywhere, yep. but you could get like crab flavored everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I crab flavor sounds had. pretty good. Uh, it sounds like it would taste good. I have never had it, but they they did do a limited edition salt and vinegar recently, so that was good. I bought about 15 bags of those, but swiftly moving on from crisps back into the game. Um, Half and Liberty, you know, they are in a position just like earlier on in this game, Alex, where we were saying. You know, early on, it looked like Imperial were looking pretty rough in the first couple of rounds. Half of Liberty were winning rounds. Sure, but, you know, if something just went differently, if Imperial didn't do this, or they got this kill here and this jewel went their way, they probably would have won the first couple of rounds. You were just kind of waiting until they got the money out before they would start winning rounds. It kind of feels like it's a similar road right now for, for Half and Liberty. It feels like they're in the lead. But Imperial are slowly but surely coming back into this now. That that lead looks safe on the board right now, but it could very quickly fall out of their hands. Yeah, it's, it's just been such a weird half because it's just been one round for each team back and forth. So it's it's constantly felt like, okay, now Imperial should have the control <laughs> of the half. And oh, now I have in Liberty should have it. It's, it's just like swinging all over the place. Mm. It's looking like a seismometer right now with how many swings we're getting. There you go. That's my geography knowledge coming in clutch for me. <laughs> That's there. where the degree comes in, Alex. <laughs> I'm just going to try and jam all sorts of geography references into my cast to pretend my degree is useful. That's what I'm going to yeah, do. It's like, it's like so, 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 you know, all that, you know, all that money you spent on your, your degree. What, what do you use it for? Um, terrible puns and casting. So yeah. That could work. See, I mean, that's a pretty good use, really. If only I studied physics, then I could drop some nuclear reactor uh, information <laughs> on you. Just go watch um, that HBO series with, um, what do you call it? Just Chernobyl. Yeah, that's what it's called, Chernobyl. That was pretty good. I really liked that. I want to go see that. I want to watch that again, actually. Get some good uh, nuclear physics knowledge out of the TV show. Would you ever go to, to Chernobyl, Denko? You know, I've been it's to Ukraine so many times, and I just never have gone. I just never had the time, but I would definitely love to go. Just check it out. I think it would be quite a surreal experience, really. Kind of, it would feel kind of weird. But I would say that a lot of that stuff is like, it's probably too commercialized now. I, I don't know if it is the case with Chernobyl, but like a lot of places where you want to go see sort of landmarks or uh, places where crazy events have happened, whether they be fantastic or terrible, it just feels like a lot of them are never really as you expect them to be, right? Because it's just so commercialized and kind of feels a bit weird. You expect him to walk into Chernobyl and there's just like a McDonald's there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not thinking like that, but, but it's just a bus loads of people maybe. I don't, I don't know. Never been. Don't know what the experience is like. I get you. I get you. From, from the videos I've seen, I don't think there's that many people there at the same time. 
but I do think from from what I've seen, it seems like a lot of the stuff has been like like a lot of people just take stuff, which is I think just not not good. You've got to yeah. keep that as it is, man. You've got to keep the history. Yeah, just preserve it. Make it a preservation site. Well, nonetheless, we're heading right back into the game. We've had a monitor issue, but it has been resolved. And we're getting right back into the action. 11-9. This game has been a real back and forth affair between these two teams. And having Liberty coming into this one with Tech 9s. We've seen them take that A site quickly. This time, they're running ramp. These fast plays have worked for them in these sorts of rounds. Oh. Periazin has to drop down. He gets down safely and ZQK smoked off. They're going to get towards this B side. Yeah, Perrier trying to get back. The Deagle smashing in behind him. They've hopped through the window as well. The Tech Knight just running over the top. There's absolutely nothing you can do there if you're Perrier. You're in peril. And now the rest of his team trying to get back into the site. Showtime's in the vent. Shout. What's out from these doors? Down to the right side. It's another T play, but they've done a very good job of just easing control of the lower bomb site. And now playing from control room with the picked up weapons. It's the M4 in with one. W1 backing up with the Tech 9. It's 2K from him. And it's all on fast and left alone, trying to deal with the multiple players. This round slowly but surely gone. 12 to 9, having Liberty. Just another quick round with those Tech 9s. They can't handle the pace right now. They just can't handle it. I was wondering if we were going to see some early nades or something, or, or something different from Imperial to try and catch out that early aggression, because Have and Liberty have consistently got away with it on those weaker buys. And it's a similar situation in that one. Maybe Imperial just weren't ready for such a fast-paced play off the back of the pause. But that's what goes up against them. And now it's Imperial's turn to try and win with the weaker buy. It's been back and forth all half long. Can we finally get a team winning two rounds in a row, Dinko? Yeah, well, they, well, they kept out the fast pace at the start of this round, at least getting docked down secret. The smoke's up. They know at least one player has crossed secret. So that's got to be in the back of the head here of the Imperial defense. And multiple players now from the T side going down secret, crossing in behind those smokes. And now it looks like having Liberty just want to play with the whole squad into the lower site. We'll watch how the adjustment to the defense is made by the CT side. Currently, they've only got one player down here. And it's uh, Peria not in the best position here with a pistol as well up on the ramp. Showtime has changed up his position, gone all the way back and come in ramp as well. They're committed to the site. Showtime sitting comfortably in his possession with this MP9. A second smoke about to be deployed. Havan Liberty look like they want to make their move, though. They've used a fair few pieces of utility. Not always easy to come over the top here, but there's still only two CTs Ooh. on this site. Perry are trying to get close to this double door smoke. Closes the door itself, and it has to worry about decon as well. So many players in the T side just wrapping this B site. 20 seconds, they've got to go here. If some kills come in for Imperial, this could all be shut down for Havan Liberty, so they need to find the fights, and they're winning everyone. There we go. That's exactly what Havan Liberty needed. They get all the jewels to go their way, and the shots coming through from Fasten and Chow. AK now in the hands as well. 2v1. Chow down to the 1v1 up against W1, who's in window. He jumps out, crossing over the rafters, and Chow pushes forward, spots him just in the top of his screen. And up with the headshot, in with the round, and having Liberty. That should have been two in a row, Alex, but the curse continues. What the hell is happening here, man? I, I don't know how this keeps happening. I feel like I need multiple game feeds just to see what's happening right now across this game. There's so much happening everywhere. Three clean kills onto the site. Boston and Xiao having to do all the work between them and Xiao flicking up for the final, man. Oh, it's another buy for Havan Liberty. This time, a couple of AKs. So I guess the buys aren't all that different this time round, Dinko. Maybe you, you can understand losing this round a little bit more. Alan and DRG picking up the premium rifles for Havan Liberty. And this time, no fast-paced play with the lower buy. Because they've got a couple of those rifles, they're happy to keep it slow. He's had enough of just jiggle peeking that, throws the molly down and then changes up his position. MP9 as your ramp player though. This could get a bit 
interesting for Imperial. It's not exactly the best weapon, but again, he's made the right decision just to fall back once he get, gathers the info. This is a decent position for the MP9 if they commit into lower, but they don't even have to. You know, that player's dropped down ramp. They can just wrap heaven. Leaving those options open. Fasten has eyes down below in case any players come this way. Have and Liberty have other ideas. 35 oh. seconds and, well, one of those players has just popped up for a quick kill. Have and Liberty having second thoughts about the ramp play. They're coming back to this A side of the map. Yeah, Perry has done a very good job, actually, in this ramp room. Given, given that he only has an MP9, he's been able to hold them off. He's also got a kill and now forced him into the A site. DRG has picked up one kill. That's him pulling it back if he can. Get another one. That will be huge. But will they expect Showtime? They cleared the backside, but they won't expect the second play here. Oh, Showtime. That's beautiful. Two kills denies the plant. And that's the round win as well. <laughs> just, just a dreadful round there for Remix. And 12 to 11, Imperial. I like the A setup there. Locking it down and finally winning consecutive rounds. It's Imperial who do it first. They had to do it at some point if they were going to win this game, Dinko. And now they forced Havan Liberty back down to five blocks. We might see the fast pace from Havan Liberty, but this time there isn't much weight behind the punch. Oh, good nade over oh. the top as well. Remix has been chunked down and that molly at red is preventing them from running fast. He now they're just jumping like rabbits outside and Xiao is taking them down. Everyone wants a piece of that pie. They want all the eco kills, but somehow Al has got down into the lower site. He thought he hit the jackpot for the bomb plant, but Perio was always there and witty. 12 to 12. We said there was a real good chance for Half a Liberty to take this series 2-0. And now they've been brought to the break. 12 to 12, even again. There's a buy coming up for the T side, heading into the next one. This is, I guess, the first full proper gun round we've really had in this second half. Yeah, Weirdly enough, been. we're into round 25. I think that's one of the later first gun rounds I've seen. The orb is out for ZQK, who's seeing if he can catch an unsuspecting player crossing into his vision. So he's going to go for a more aggressive angle and then drop down the vents. Those yard smokes from Havan Liberty already drawing out a response. Yeah, they've made a lot of these audible rotations down the vent. And that is info to Heaven Liberty if any player is in towards lobby. And uh, I don't really know how I feel about the, the, the AWP dropping down vent. It must be a very uncomfortable position. Luckily, still with that secret control. So he's uh, in a decent spot for it. Minute left, Heaven Liberty about to walk into the A site. Trying to get out door. They're going to split from main and the door itself from lobby. Chow getting checked. He did one kill. And now Fasten's position known. He's up on top of Rafter, so drops down to try and change the position to the back of the site. He's done a very good job at changing that up. And again, those A site fights are just going in the CT's white. W1s get down into the lower bomb site. He'll confirm the bomb plan for the 1v4 clutch. We are looking at a very difficult situation for him. Peria has given him that one chance for the early kill. Confirms he's at the back of the site and Fasten taking him down. Into the lead, Imperial find themselves on 13. This is that shot from ZQK coming up through Secret after initially rotating away from the A site. He comes back into play to help close out the round. And yeah, W1 has slowed down quite a lot since that really strong start from him. The RG has even overtaken him in terms of fragging output on the Havan Liberty side. It's another situation where they have to go down to pistols. Once again, they have that utility to back them up. So if Havan Liberty wants to go for these yard smokes, that's an option. They have those flashes, which might allow them to try and close the distance for a quick play early. Similar rotation down from ZQK. A lot of utility used by Imperial to try and deny this drop. But Havan Liberty are going to get it anyway. Yeah, they've crossed very well down into secret here. They've got a rotation from ZQK with his AWP. He's playing from Decon with this AWP, so he should be good for one, but misses the shot in the cross. And now needs to reposition and fight double door. They're just running, they're not stopping. They keep going into B. One shot for him, but crosses into the open and gets caught because of that. 
And now the pistol's delivering death everywhere on the map right now. Showtime trying to do his best. He's down to 15 HP, and DRG's in the perfect spot to catch him if he tries to get down the vent. W1 has been their nemesis in this round. And Showtime with the AK versus three players. 15 HP to do it. I'm, I'm calling this one, Alex. You know, it's not the most bold prediction of my career, but he's not winning this one. And we just see the pistols answer back again. Why? It just keeps happening. Yeah, this is the sort of game that, that Imperial might watch back afterwards. If they do lose it, they're, they're just going to be so frustrated. I think both teams will with some of these yeah, rounds sure. they've been losing. Didn't even really get to see how Alec got those two kills, which were huge in terms of swinging the round into Havan Liberty's favor. It's just chaos that's being created in these rounds between both of these teams and the pistols can thrive in those sorts of scenarios. Oh wow, this was Alec. He's just holding for the vent rotate. Those are easy kills lined up, even with a P250. A lot of these vent rotations down to the B site, but they're always going to be risky when you go for them. And now Havan Liberty decide to take a timeout, all tied up ahead of round 27. Fun fact, trial by fire. DRG's first pro game was in 2018 versus Furia with Art, Yuri, Casarato, and Vinny. 4 and 32 was the round score. No, it's never easy to play Furio first. <laughs> I just like to imagine DRG thinking, man, is this how all pro teams play? <laughs> oh, God. It's like, get me out. I quit. Oh, my God. Look at the amount of utility. <laughs> it's a site right now. Adam and Liberty throwing their full executor and they want to get away with it. They want to try and use this utility to get down vent and they've done that. They've got three players down B. W1, that's not the vent. That's a wall right there. They're all trying to get down into the site. They've all made it. Four players down into B. Peria has made the rotation. He spotted the decom player and Remix is brought out of the round. Peria, a second kill. What a fantastic job he's doing right now. A third. That is huge from Peria. And now DRG left alone in a 1v4. What a wild round of Counter-Strike. And DRG needs to try and win it alone. The five-man vent drop into the B site. DRG trying to turn around, but Fastin's going to get him in the back. Havan Liberty not able to use their nades to deny that AWP. 1v1 fights given over to Pyrian to begin with. He shouldn't have got away with some of these earlier shots. You can see there, if you just have that one smoke, I'm pretty sure they had a smoke available, but they didn't drop it down. And then at the end here, Pyrian does a great job off the back of the smoke, getting aggressive, getting involved. Final flick was fantastic. Great round coming in from Pyrian, up to 14 for Imperial. Havan Liberty using a lot of their early utility on A, getting down to B, and then not being able to get that bomb down safely. It was fun to watch, at least. I mean, it was, it was wild, but fun to watch. It's a spectacle for sure. Peria, what a fantastic round he had last time around. And he starts off the 20th with a fantastic start. Good opening up to Silo. The orbs could be the turning factor. If they can start to become consistent and picking off that early player, shutting down the rounds, this could be the winning... Piece of the puzzle. That's the bomb DRG's crossing out there. That's the bomb. He needs to be careful. He's got his teammates backing him up this time. Nope. Good flash. Oh, no, it's not. A little too deep. And they don't check the back of garage. Bomb down. Traded out by the rifle so that Haven Liberty can get this yard control. Imperial having to plug that gap with Xiao rotating over to make sure that hell is clear that he's getting aggressive. Spawning some information at yards. 30 seconds remaining. He's got a smoke. That's going to slow Allah down. He can now go up into heaven and have on Liberty have to get a move on here. Chow. Oh my God. That timing for Doc. That's horrible. Chow now holding heaven. The bomb gone. And it's up on top of the ladder. Allah's got 10 seconds. 10 seconds to just think about how bad this round played out. 
It's 15 to 13. Looking like we're going to be heading to another map, but I mean, you've got some money here having Liberty. It's not fantastic. I mean, only one player can get a full buyout. Doc can buy an 8k in armor, but you look at the rest, it's, it's certainly going to be just trying to scrap together what you can. Overtime is a possibility, theoretically, but will it play out? We've seen a lot of pissed rounds so far, Alex. A lot of lower tier buy rounds working out, so maybe, just maybe, having Liberty can stay afloat here. This final timeout taken ahead of... A very important round for Havan Liberty. They have had their chances here on Nuke. Even though it is Imperial's map pick, it's been a back and forth affair. Both teams have had plenty of chances to take control of the economy. Now we're into the full gun rounds though, and those orps you pointed out have started to take over in the last couple of rounds towards the end of the game. The snipers finally get a chance to do their best work. They've done exactly that. ZQK, seeing if he can find this early pick. He's so confident, so comfortable at taking this early fight. He's looking for it again. Not going to get it. Fast in his mid. Pushing him first and getting the headshot. I just love that. I just love that aggressive play coming in from the CT side. Fast and just going in, getting out of there as well. It's a sting operation and it's paid off perfectly. Flash into main. Fatson's going to be blinded by it. Now trying to change up his position. Here come Haven Liberty into the A site. Trying to get this over the line. But Imperial, they look like they've done it. They have over the line. 16-13. Map number two goes their way. And we are going to be heading to a third map, Hulk. This game is heating up real fast. 